Welcome back to NYC TV Live, everyone. I'm Kristen Scholler. Well, on Monday, a trio of U.S.-based economists earned one of the world's most prestigious honors. MIT's Darren Asimoglu and Simon Johnson, along with the University of Chicago's James A. Robinson, were awarded the Nobel Memorial Prize for Economic Sciences. The prize motivation was, quote, for studies of how institutions are formed and affect prosperity, end quote. Well, the three economists will also share a million dollar cash prize. My colleague Trinity Chavez is on the trading floor and has more on this story. Good morning, Trinity. Good morning, Kristen. That's right. So the Noble Committee says that these three economists have demonstrated the importance of societal institutions for a country's prosperity. One of the honorees, Professor Simon Johnson of MIT Sloan School of Management, is joining me now to discuss this further. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor, and congratulations. Thank you very much. So what was your initial reaction when you heard the news? Uh, I was surprised and, and delighted. <laughs> Surprised and delighted. Well, your research and all the important work that you're doing really highlights how poor institutions and, and weak rule of law hinder economic growth. Can you explain the most surprising or most important finding of your work? Well, I think the most important finding, Trinity, is that while the sort of a necessary layer of, of property rights and, and equal protection before the law and, and political rights that you need for shared prosperity. It's also really important to have a responsible degree of, of regulation, including self-regulation, like through the stock exchange, including financial regulation, financial regulators uh, where, where appropriate. And, and I think the US, as obviously we debate these issues all the time, and I think we struggle from time to time to find the right balance, but I, I think overall, the the outstanding success of the U.S. as an innovative place and a place for capital to be built and a place where workers get paid decent money is, is largely due to the fact that more often than not we get the balance right and we, we, we layer the right kind of regulation on top of our property rights institutions. And that is no easy feat. So, But can you share a, a real life example uh, or a world situation where your research has actually been applied or even could be applied to improve the prosperity of a country? Well, Trinity, as you may know, I was the chief economist of the International Monetary Fund in 2007 through the end of August 2008. And we worked very long and hard dur during that period to try and make financial systems more robust and to try and head off some aspects of the financial crisis. I I'm not saying we were particularly successful in that, but, but from that work came uh, a lot of ideas about financial reform in the U.S., in Europe, and I've uh, worked, uh, had the great pleasure of working with, with Sheila Baer and, and other distinguished individuals in the Systemic Risk Council subsequently that, that's um, supported by the CFA Institute. And, and we try on, on, on a weekly basis basically to bring best practice ideas to, to many parts of the world in terms of making off all our financial systems, banking, non-banking, capital markets, make them more resilient in terms of exactly the institutional structure that market participants need in order for everything to function properly. And your research spans across different regions, including sub-Saharan Africa and Latin America. Are there common institutional challenges in these areas, or do they differ significantly? Well, every country is obviously different, Trinity, but I think the, the common theme, that, which is a rather tragic one, is that some countries, when they begin to build democracy and they begin to share prosperity, some sort of populist comes along or, or, or there's a backlash uh, because people feel they're not making uh, progress fast enough. And that undermines the democracy. And people say, well, it's okay. We have a brilliant populist. He or she will sort things out. And, and you might have one or two good years, but ultimately that form of authoritarian rule that, that, that breaks the existing institutions doesn't replace it with a, with a fair playing field for everyone. That leads to a lot of corruption, it leads to a lot of malpractice, and it leads to massive amounts of disappointment, which of course can further downward spiral of those economies, and hence terrible living conditions, pressure for emigration, and climate change just exacerbates the problems in many of those low-income countries. Now, the Nobel Prize comes with a significant monetary award. Can you talk more about your plans on how you'll use that prize money? I, honestly, Trinity, I haven't talked to my family about that yet. It's uh, the, the whole thing is, is so new. I'm still trying to catch up on emails that were sent to me at 6 o'clock yesterday morning. Is there any areas of focus that you want to further explore? Yes, at, at MIT, Duran Nassimoglu, my, my co-winner, and David Orter, uh, one of the world's leading labor economists, we run a research group called Shaping the Future of Work. And our priority there is to 
find ways not to stop technological uh, progress because that's impossible and not a good idea but, but to shape it and to push it in ways that we pro worker by which we mean creating more opportunity more higher productivity better pay for the people who didn't necessarily go to college we think ai provides a fantastic opportunity to do this but it's not necessarily the path that we will follow if big tech companies only dominate the technolo technology formation agenda, you're probably not going to get pro worker AI. But there's a lot of other people in this society and other societies with a lot of really good ideas about how to use what AI is now unleashing. So we're all about studying that, amplifying what works and, and trying to help move policy in the direction of being supportive of developing pro worker AI. And, and quickly, we have about 30 seconds left, Professor, but from your vantage point, how do you engage your students in these sort of critical issues of institutional quality and economic growth? And what advice would you give young economists inspired so much by your work? Well, business school students are all over these issues, Trinity. I mean, I've had thousands of students with fantastic discussions, and, and people see this in, in mattering in, 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 in real life and real practice. As for research, I think the future of technology, shaping technology, redirecting technology, that is a, is a fascinating and very difficult frontier. But, you know, at MIT, we don't uh, generally work on easy questions, and it's not an easy place to work, so that fits. Well, thank you so much, Professor. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Again, Professor Simon Johnson of MIT Sloan School of Management, thank you so much for joining us today.